Hi everybody. Let's see who's going to come on with us today. Hi, 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 hi. Hello, 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 hello. It's always awkward at this point of live IG. You're just there talking to yourself. Not sure who anyone else is picking this up or not. Till then, how's your Saturday going? I hope you're resting or having fun or enjoying it any which way that's good for you. Some of us, or well, if not a lot of us, are kind of behaving like um, we've just been let out of prison. Feels like we have been in prison for the last 18 months, but hey. I trust everyone's okay and everyone's fine. No one's on yet, so I don't know if you can hear me. I am just talking to myself. <laughs> well, so anybody comes on, let's see what I can walk around with some filters. Nah, I don't think I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Can't see it, Liddy. I can't see it. I see the message, but I don't see it, the request itself. That's the beauty of this. Now I'm stuck. Heaven knows what's going on. Go back. Lady, if you sent an invite, I haven't seen it yet. It's just not coming up. I can't see anybody on at the moment. It's a whole three minutes and I can't see anyone at the moment. Aha. Okay. <laughs> Hi, lady. I see you now. I'm just waiting to see if anyone else is going to come on. And um, we'll just send out some requests to everybody and let everyone know we'll be up soon. Um, if you're ready to jump on, that's cool. But let's see who comes on. And um, we'll go from there. If not, they can always watch the replay, and that's fine too. So, come on, guys. Yeah. While you're on, Lydia, can you hear my sound? Is it good? It's not echoing. Nothing's happening to it because I haven't got my headphones on today. Huh? And um, I don't like those AirPods things. So if my sound is good, Liddy, tell me, let me know. Oh, my sound is food. I like food too. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm messing with you. Um, <laughs> that's good, that's fine. Uh, let's see, let's try and get you on while the in while the network and the internet is actually acting proper. Hopefully we'll get everybody else on at the same time. Hello. Hey. Hello, hello. Oops. You see? The I drama. <laughs> the <Yeah>. drama. <laughs> Just trying to make sure internet is working well, everything is working well. It's such a drama, right? You just yeah. think everything is fine and then something goes wrong. And, and the like, first time I think I tried to do one of these, it just, um, it didn't work. Like the request didn't work. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we've, got, we've got people coming on now. Hi, Bulky. Hello. Just let's give, I just wanted to give everybody a bit of time to come in. 
I know I think, most of my, uh, I think most of my people that are gonna watch are gonna join the replay <laughs> not on a Saturday I really felt for them eight o'clock in the morning on a Saturday I don't yeah. think so <laughs> well some people might be watching it in bed that would be nice yeah that would be nice too uh, but here even in the summer months because the sun just rises up real early did you just feel like the day started once the sun's up i'm up so from yeah. four o'clock i'm up <laughs> from four o'clock i'm That's up early <laughs> it's early but the sun's up and the sun's oh, going yeah. down into, into a while hi bookie it's been a while haven't seen you in a while so it'll be cool i think we will just Go for it, and everybody else right. will join us. But hey, welcome, 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 welcome. Really do appreciate you coming on here. Um, I'm happy to be it's, here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's all about us talking about taking big chances. Um, I haven't done some of these lives in a couple of months because I had stuff I had to do as well. I'd hope to be doing them every other month, but you know. I would rather flow and really want to do this than put myself in such an engine where I feel like, oh, I have to do this and I have to do this. That's just supposed to be the joy of having to do what you like to do when you like to do it. Um, and that's what we're going to be talking to you today about. So without much ado, introduce yourself, my darling. <laughs> okay, so I am Lydia, even though my Instagram handle is Life of Liddy. Um, I, I, sure. I wasn't sure whether you preferred like, Liddy or you preferred Lydia. I, like I realize Lydia. it probably, <laughs> I realize it probably confuses people, but um, I go by Liddy by my all my nephews, so <laughs> that's where that comes from. <laughs> um, so I guess. I grew up in Ohio and did all the things you're supposed to do. I went to college, became an engineer, um, and I did that for 10 years and then um, decided that that was not for me for many reasons. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of gender bias in the workplace and it just got to a point where it was too toxic and I had to leave. And so I spent probably three years trying to figure out um, like what to do. And finally stumbled upon digital marketing and that's what I do now. Um, and yeah, it's scary <laughs> to do, put yourself out there. Yeah, um, I mean, what made you pick, um, was it, what engineering did you do? I did civil engineering. Um, civil engineering. So why, what made you pick that up at what, how old? 17, um, 18? Yep. 17, 18. So when I was in high school, um, in America, it's very, like decide what you want to do when you're i don't know 15 and it's like i have no idea <laughs> i think it's at most places in the world it's yeah. the same in the uk at, at 16 you're making the decision of your life yeah um and i think i had debated between journalism and engineering <laughs> And in my mind, it was, I'm not going to be able to make money as a journalist because that's dying oh. art, right? There we go. <laughs> um, which is not true, but it's just changed. <laughs> and I, so I picked engineering because it was supposed to be stable. Um, I design roads and highways. And so I also was thinking, well, they're like, we're always going to need roads and highways. So this should be a steady job that I can always have and get paid. Um, and I did enjoy it at the beginning, but it also was, I mean, it was not that difficult. And so it kind of got boring. <laughs> it was not then, that difficult. No. Wow. Okay. So what, what, was your, what was your typical day like? Or what's your typical day like as a civil engineer? Okay. So you get up, you go, into the, you go into the office, you have a computer with two screens and at least two, if not three. And then you sit in front of your computer all day and um are either designing something on the computer or you're um doing calculations for it but that's so there was no all day. you never and went out to, to see the actual things um, you were building sometimes but not really and then depending on what your job was i had different roles i guess throughout my career sometimes it was that and then sometimes it was more just calling people and making sure they were doing what they were supposed to be doing <laughs> 
So, so you you use you use the word stability twice or three times when you were, when you are picking your decision for taking for taking civil engineering. Steady job, stability, income, and yeah. that was what that was what tipped it over from doing journalism to yeah. doing that. And then you stay, you do this, and you make all these tons of money. Yep. And then you decide one day you want to chuck it away. Yeah. How many <laughs> of your family and friends held you down and wanted to certify you? Um, so it was like a three-year process. And I think most of my friends and family. So by the end, um, my mental health had gotten really bad. Oh, yeah. Hello to the new person. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um my mental health had gotten really bad. Like I had a lot of depression from work and it was just not good. <laughs> and so I think they had watched that struggle and I had debated about all the things. Like I had looked at doing, um, becoming a lawyer. <laughs> I had looked at quitting and going and doing coding. Yeah. <laughs> let's, okay. let's, let's talk about your mental health. It was already stressful <laughs> doing civil engineering. And in your head, you still were thinking lawyer. Yes. So <laughs> I, that's a bad option. But in my head, I was thinking lawyer because uh, there's a lot of like really lucrative positions for engineers to become attorneys because then you become an expert, like a subject matter expert type of thing. And um, you can do very specific roles and it's a very needed position and there's not that many so i was like oh um i guess to touch on where the struggle i came with in engineering it's a very um like prestigious everybody feels like they're very prestigious and whenever i told anybody that i was a civil engineer they're like oh you're a woman engineer and it's like you could see that look of like admiration and um i mean that's very i don't know what the right word is like selfish not selfish but like shallow <laughs> no, not really shallow, but think about it majority of people like even you and decided most of us when we when we're in, in school and we make and you ask us if you ask a child at 17 what would you like to be i want to be a doctor i want to be a lawyer i want to be a engineer yeah, that is what we have heard and seen as, and it is prestigious. It is, it is elevated. I think those positions are elevated, yeah. and for for very good reason. You said it: stability, a steady income, and receive. Yeah. And who doesn't want that? Right. And those are those are what we aspire and what we call success. Yeah, that you have a steady income. You're you're secure in what you're going to pay your bills and how you're going to progress. And I think most families and most people, that's the first thing when you talk about a job. Why spend all that time in school and come yeah. out and you don't do? So we go for the elevated subject. Not, I, um, and like you said, even things like the, um, the arts and the creative, it's always assumed as mm, a hobby. You're not going to, you're going to be poor forever. And yeah. that's the understanding of it. And that's, I yeah. think that's what most people go into. And it's very true. It's like, the ability to study income is definitely the plus up there. But like yeah. you were talking about how it affected your mental health. Now, yeah. that's regardless of the money or yeah. the income. That was well, a major thing. I think that was the tipping point. What was the, what was the actual tipping point that said, okay. Um, so three years before I quit, um, I went, I had been in with the same company for eight years. Um, and I had drank the Kool-Aid, so to speak. I was all <laughs> in, I would talk like, this is the best company ever, um, promote them. And I was that person. And then, um, there was a bit of gaslighting that happened, which I know that term is floating a bit about, um, I had a situation happen basically to like boil it really down that um, I had worked with my superiors and like I needed help on this. And then they just kind of were like, no, you need to figure it out on your own and did not give me any help. And then it was just, it kept progressing and it was really bad. And they kind of ended up saying like, you made it all up, <laughs> even though I had physical, like I had documentation and email and like papers and they said it was all made up. 
Um, and you're the only female. How many females were in this company, <laughs> were in this situation? If, in, that, in that field, how many would you say? So on average, um, and it's like hard to explain. So in my office, there were probably 10 of us out of 200. But are those birds too loud? I'm sorry. No, so okay. Background? okay. Um, so probably 10 women out of 200, like on an average meeting, I might be the one or two of 10 to 20 men. Um, it's something that also there's like, a, was a bit of pride in that too. I'm going to go know. inside. Is that okay? I feel like it's too loud. Are you not hearing the birds? I'm good, but it's not. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I wanted to make sure it's not too loud. No, it's not, <laughs> it's like, bugging anybody else. Um, Sudhi or Booty, is the bird bugging you? Let's know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they all of a sudden just came and were like, <laughs> For me, it's just atmosphere, so, but I don't know okay. about anybody else. So. Okay. No, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, yeah. so um, where were we at now? I lost my train of thought. So, so that's what it is. So, you've got, so you're in an environment where, one, your mental health has been attacked. You yeah. don't have, you're not having the support from yeah. other colleagues because it's a yeah. male-dominated environment. Yeah. Oh, so, and it culminated into this one last meeting, um, and it was – me in a room with three of my male bosses and they each like my direct and then he, his boss and then his boss. And, um, basically the one guy ended up leaning over the table, yelling at me in my face. And I just like froze and like, I had to remove myself. And then they were like, that was it. Um, I ended up, you, you were yeah. being emotional, but he was expressing himself. Yeah, he was being emotional. <laughs> yeah, but no, 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 no. I no. was being emotional. <laughs> no, you were being emotional, but he was expressing himself, and these yes. are the challenges. So, yeah. you know, I, I mean, that was tough. And, well, and, then, and then to add to it, I contacted HR, and HR was like, oh, well, I don't need to hear your side. I've already heard the three guys' side, so I don't need to hear your side. Because, yeah, and I was like, excuse me? <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think that will make you go like, okay, done enough, I'm out. Yeah. So then I tried. Yes, sorry, ahead, sorry. No, go ahead. So then I tried um two more companies, and it was the same thing. Wow. So you yeah. were in, you were in corporate for how, uh, a total of how many years? Um, between eleven and twelve, somewhere in there. Wow, that's a lot. That's yeah. a lot of years. So how do you yeah, take? And, that's a lot. I mean, how do you make? I mean, it's good you had family and friends that would support you. Yeah. and understood your challenge. Yeah. And that's really a plus. Um, yes. But how did you? How did you feel like? You know, wasn't it terrifying for you? You know, to have to live this steady income and regular. I really, really struggled with that. <laughs> like, really struggled with the money part. Like, for me, I think the biggest part about leaving and changing and doing anything was how am I going to make this income? And like, I really debated, and I'm still debating about it if I want to become a therapist, but. I really debated, like, do I also want to go back to school and spend all this money, and is it going to change, or is it going to be the same thing? Like, I really, that's the biggest thing I struggled with was, okay, I have this big income as an engineer, and then am I going to have to give that up, and then am I going to go to school for another four years and spend another, I don't know, school's like $50,000 to end up in the same spot, and starting at the, you know, like, in 10 years from now, I'm feeling the same way, and I was, so... I think that's like ultimately was I just can't go, I can't do this all over again. <laughs> so who, were you, who were you having this dialogue with? Who was available for you to to do this? So um, this I spoke a lot. Well, so <laughs> my therapist was probably okay. my biggest person I spoke with. Um, my husband actually got irritated with me at one point because I wasn't bringing up ideas to him he's like why are you're like i was just thinking about it myself um and so once we actually started talking about it that's when it really um i so think kind of like broke so open and i was able to talk through ideas and that like oh becoming an attorney would be really terrible <laughs> that's probably even more male overpopulated <laughs> I know so, this, so, this is, so, this, so it's definitely not a decision you get up in the morning and you go i'm chucking in my corporate job you. I feel like it's something that you've ruminated on for, I mean, I feel like when I made that decision, um, like I had made the decision that I was, I'm leaving my corporate job. 
like it happened like that boiling point of that meeting but then it took me it took me a long time you know two more jobs of trying to I'm that person that gives too many chances but I gave them two more chances and but it's what but it's what you're familiar with it's very yeah. hard to leave your familiar ground yeah. and step out so you and I really right? thought I feel like a lot of people maybe end up getting stuck in the I really thought this was what and I still sometimes struggle with it that I'm only good at being an engineer like I I can't tell you how many times I've told my husband maybe I just am only cut out to be an engineer and I'm stuck in this like I'm stuck being an engineer so yeah. tell us now so you stepping out so what was your first um what was it what would you call it stepping out on your own what did you what area did you go did you go straight into digital marketing or how did that evolve um so, so i went straight into it well okay so i started my blog a year ago just for fun and then it kind of turned into maybe i can like make money off of my blog because people do that like <laughs> yeah, yeah and i was like maybe i can put in the work for that but like i had no idea what i was doing um and so I kept working and then one of my previous coworkers that I had worked with in engineering, um, she had quit her job four years ago and traveled the world for a year and then um, decided she could never go back to corporate. So her boyfriend is an engineer too and he went back to working and as an engineer, but she was like, I can't do that. So she, I saw what she was doing and I reached out to her and was like, hey. <laughs> And I was like, if you could leave your engineering job and money and income and do this, like I can too. <laughs> absolutely, I, absolutely. So what yeah. was what was it? What was it for you? Do you want to share and tell us what it was? What was the what um, was she doing? Um, so she is an affiliate for Kangen Water, um, which is like basically highly alkalized, um, more antioxidants in it than um like five pounds of blueberries, um. So that's what she is doing, and that's what I'm doing. And then, yeah, so that's basically so that, we learn. Is that the only thing you're doing? Is that the only so thing? So I also write. I know you're doing quite a bit. I want to know how, for those that don't know you, I want to know how all the different things you're doing and how you, how you balance them out, you know. Balance is key because that's <laughs> – okay, so I worked a lot in engineering. I am a – what is like a, a doer, I guess. Um, and so I do, I write, I like writing. Like I have found like that is something I really, really enjoy doing. So I'm writing on medium, um, which is kind of like a lot of, I like to call it op-eds, just a bunch yeah. of, but you can get paid through that for anybody out there that doesn't know you can. So I joined medium just to read. So I paid for the membership to read articles and then was like, well, I'm writing on my blog. I might as well submit them and see if I can get paid. Um, Absolutely. Hey, Tim. And um, <laughs> sorry. So if you're writing, I would recommend joining that because I haven't made a ton of money with it yet, but like it's growing and I can see my progression from my very first article. It was so bad. So it's a lot better now. But so I write um, and then I do this affiliate marketing so those are like in the nuts, like to the whatever I do. But then, I mean, the big part of it is I want to be able to make money so I can promote um, like women's rights with all this gender bias I've gone through. Because my whole big thing with going into engineering was like, I want to show that women can do these things. So I really struggled with leaving engineering for that reason, too, because I felt like I was letting women down. But yeah. then I realized I'm not because um, I've set a boundary that, no, you can't treat women like that. So you have you have your main. What I'm hearing you say is your real vision is what you, really what you want, what you're passionate about is how to affect women, how to build women, women up. I have like three main things. It's like women and then um, mental health. I mean, because I think people still have this bad stigma around mental health. I mean, I think it's getting better, but it's like we're always in an emotion and mental health is really important and I think we treat it like it's a bit, but it's just as important as your physical health. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, and work and how it, and how it, how yeah. it comes together with what you're doing, be it in your creative work or your business yeah. work. It's, 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 it's holistic is your life is your life. Yeah. You know, so, so what I need, I need to explain to people what you mean when you say affiliate, everyone oh. might understand that. Yes. That okay. So, 
to explain affiliate alex okay so um in easy terms first if you've ever bought a product and it's like hey if you share this with your friend and they buy you can get 20 percent off like if you have a special link that you've sent to a friend for a product let's say it's like a pair of shoes with a certain brand or a purse and then you can get that code that's an affiliate but then there's like different levels of that that's like a basic um level but then there's a level of where you can earn straight money for being an affiliate and i like to summarize it as it's like the new way of marketing because if you see your friend advertising like hey i found this new sweater um grab my link to grab yours and you can get 20 percent off and then i get 20 percent off my next purchase like i would rather buy something for my friend than because i trust my friend has used it there's yeah. that, that trust comes in place. I trust their opinion on it, yeah. Trust their opinion, and the fact that they've used it gives you a lot yeah. more confidence to use it. So you've got the affiliate business. You've yeah. got the writing. So you see, yeah. you, you found yourself back to writing that you left when you were 16 and 17, and you told yeah. yourself you weren't going to make any money out of that. Yeah, and, and then I thought I wouldn't be able to write as an engineer, and I'm like, no, I write really well. <laughs> but, and another thing I'm hearing you say is, you are not limiting your scope. No. You're, in, you're, you're doing quite a diverse thing. So you're doing the kanga water, mm -hmm. you're doing the writing, and there are a couple of other things you're doing. Um, so I would like, I have long-term plans. Oh, I mean, yeah, I have long-term plans because I think it's really important in entrepreneurship, and I know you can probably relate to this, um, not spreading yourself too thin too quick really building up one thing and getting that going so that it's kind of a steady running machine before you add on another so i'd like to do a podcast at some point i'd like to do a youtube at some point which i have stuff on youtube um and i guess there's elements of my affiliate business um it's really about presence on social media so i mean i do mantras on every monday and um and those are on reels but then i also put them on youtube <laughs> So there's there's a kind of a growth and a growth. The growth is quite organic as well. Yeah. But it's delib but it's but it's intentional. You're not just doing random things. It might yeah. appear random, but it's not random. It's it's so you so what would you what would be your advice? Would be pick a thing, but don't limit yourself. And yeah. um, pick what you want. I mean, and it's it's also I about pivoting. I guess it's pick what you feel. So when I started in the business, I have a like a community that I started with and training and they really push Facebook marketing on Facebook, which is cool. But I was never on Facebook and that's not my crowd. And so I tried that and that just was like a really big struggle for me to be on Facebook. And yeah. now I'm focusing more on Instagram. And like I've talked with my mentor about that, actually, like and getting a mentor is really kind of, I think, important as well. Well, we're um, coming to that. <laughs> yeah, and knowing who your like knowing who your audience is, I think that's really important too. Like, and uh, being a, you need to join a community. You say you have advice to join a community. Yeah, because especially join in entrepreneurship, you know, my husband he is very supportive, but like he doesn't know what I do. I mean, he does, but like he can't. When I get really excited about something, he's like, "Why does that even matter?" What, and my parents have no idea what I'm doing. They're like you're going to make money by doing videos on Instagram. <laughs> Which is true. And, that, yeah. and and this does not require you having to start up with your, when you say your own team of people, so you're not starting yeah. up in a, you're not starting up and getting the, you know, brick and mortar, a, a store yeah. room or, a, or an office space. Yeah. And the, the beauty of technology is you have everything in your hands. We're using it right now. We're yeah, doing like I'm this sitting right outside now. in a patio in Ohio because I'm traveling and like we can do this right now. <laughs> you're doing this right now, and 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 that's the beauty of it. So, you, what what would you say to people? Anybody that wants to, that's like you said. First of all, think about it. Is what I'm hearing very well. Yeah, you have to do your research. Why don't you want to? Which do I think that? the research, the biggest research is yeah. Why do you want to do it? And then like it's internal. Like what? what drives you and what do you want to give to the world? So for me, it's, you know, women's empowerment. I want to speak, um, 
I get a lot of shitty comment from men on the articles that I write about women, but I'm like, you're not my audience. So I really like, and I also recognize they have their own issues, but it's like, I don't care. I'm going to do, but you know, it's like, I'm speaking to the women. That's my audience. That's your audience. And for you to do that, you need to create something that's monetary that you can afford. And that, that, I think that builds you because how did we get to know each other with true community? Yeah. And I think, and I think, if you don't, one of the very important things I try, I'm trying to get people to understand is you need to shift out of your own community. If you remain yeah. only in your community, it's quite limited how yeah. much you can find out and know about other streams of income and yeah. other ways of making, um, of having, of you know, of increasing your income. And that's other, and, and and I think that's very very important not to limit your your community, try and get involved yeah. in other communities and find out yeah. what's happening. And that will just really create the, the growth. Um, you yeah, said something. Think, yeah, go I was going to add on to the community. So like I have my community that I became a part of with my training, but then I've also developed this separate community. So like I have my physical community, you know, and my husband, my parents, my friends here. Uh, but that I have the community of my team that also are um, King and Water distributors that we all talk. But then I have another community like you that I have developed on all through social media that I've all made through. these really good relationships that all these other women are doing different things. Um, and so, yeah, it's really, I would say one of the bonuses of entrepreneurship that I was not expecting is learning about we're not limited. <laughs> you know, like it's really hard to open that. And I think, and I think a lot of times when people say you're not working, so people say you're not in the corporate circle now, now you're, you're working for yourself. And the assumption is digital marketing means you're home all day, playing around with Twitter, Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, making TikTok videos and just, you know, lounging around the place. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> um, forgetting because you've said a couple of things that people are not aware of. It requires a lot of training learning you're you're constantly learning you're constantly and social media is always changing so it's like keeping Every up with oh, reels or doing Every these week. yeah <laughs> you know and things like things that you would not never get into were you editing before did you know anything about editing videos before <laughs> I learned so much about my writing even like that has evolved. It's like, and going back to my first videos and my first posts on Instagram, there's a way of writing your posts that you learn like, Oh, people only like to read a sentence or two. And then you had to ask spaces because they're skimming. And it's like, I didn't know that. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and then even the content that you're putting out and you're yeah. trying to get, you're trying to get them to come back. So you yeah. don't want to bombard all the information in one post. You yeah. can you can spread it along a lot and get them yeah. to, to you know to get in, involved with you. One thing I wanted to ask as well was um, with the training and the community and the building, digital marketing. What exactly is digital marketing? <laughs> because you know that's another thing we're hearing yeah. thrown around. Yeah, people because always I'm ask. That. I'm a digital marketer, or I'm a content provider, or mm -hmm. You know, and you say content provider, what exactly is a content provider? Is it only for social media? You can consider yourself a content provider? So that's so basically, I mean, I, I focus on social media, media, but I think in the broad scheme of what it can be and what mm -hmm. other, so I specifically do it on like social media. Um, and I've picked my, I've even picked my social media, like, um, I do reels and they could be on TikTok, but that's too much for me. Um, that's too many platforms. So my main media is Instagram. Um, but I think digital marketing also means um, you could be doing copywriting. So writing ads for companies, or you could be um, doing ads on Google, or you can be helping to create content for a specific company. Um, or you could be freelance and creating content for various. I think even, I don't know. I mean, there's also virtual assistants. I feel like you could also throw them in there as doing the yeah. same thing. Yeah. I mean, I think it like, it's like digital marketing is just the big broad term of um, when I tell my parents what I do, that's what I tell them what I do because I know they're not going to under, like, they're not going to understand that. Digital marketing is not just promoting businesses. No. It is creating, promoting businesses. It's creating, it is. It's like creating your brand 
to sell. I mean, I think part of it is like creating like my brand, your brand, which is not, I feel like people think brand and they think logos and colors. And it's like, no, if you come to my page, you know, these three things I'm going to be talking about, you know, like, you know, somewhere in my post, I'm going to talk about my business. I'm going to talk about um, women's rights. I'm going to talk about sustainability. I'm going to talk about mental health. Like, you know that. (laughs) And that's, I think what it is too. And that becomes, and that's, that's really what your brand is. And and I'm glad you said that because the first thing people think about branding would be which is something, even for me, I found this really, I think quite recently, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine, and I go, I would have never thought in a million years I'd be interested in digital marketing. Yeah, same. I, I, it, it I used to look at people taking, I still have the own stigma I have to get over, because um, I used to look at the people out there taking selfies, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, that person. I do that. <laughs> I do that. Now. I know, right? I know, right? Or you see something that triggers an idea or a topic you want to talk about and you don't want to break it down. But I think what is the common denominator here is apart from creating an income, it's a service. You desire to give people a service. You have yeah. an information you get. And I think that's vital to this. Yeah. Um, and it's always good as well to create income at the same time. And with the whole corona and the pandemic and the fun, wonderful time we've had in the last 18 months, I think it has, uh, you know, it has opened up our, our eyes to ideas and concepts and ways of living yes. that we had not paused to do. And the value of life, the value yes. of living. I think the value of living is, is really the quality of living. So... So success, you know that. I think success, even before, go ahead, sorry. No, no, no go, go ahead. Now, I said success, success is being redefined. Mm-hmm. The whole idea of what is success is being redefined because talked, there's, yeah, go on. So much with my therapist about success because before COVID, um, three years, four years ago now, when I had that issue at work and I really, you know, as an engineer, I was like, I need to leave this. Um, we really talked about success in that before I went into college, I was like, I just want to have a good job and I don't want it to be about money because I feel like that's a thing. And then it, it became about money. And um, so we really had to talk about how over the past 12 years, I've started to build this idea that success is money. And now I'm having to like rewire that. And that's not like, and when we, when I realized that I made my life about money and nothing else, it was really like, oh, I don't want this for my life. I never wanted this for my life. It just kind of happened. Yeah. And I let it happen without even thinking about it. And so then it's like, what is success to me? And it's waking. And that's not and having that's depression. Good. It's think, traveling. It's, yeah. I think that's a very good question we need to ask ourselves is what yeah. is success to me? Because some people might say success is I'm able to buy myself a car. Yeah. Okay. But but what if you're not interested in driving a car? So I'm yeah. a person that loves driving, loves driving. I love long distance driving. I hate driving. You can no. drive for me. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't like city driving. I like, uh, I, don't I, don't like the, I don't like the stopping of the traffic lights and the no. pedestrians <laughs> and all that people. No, that will just ick me. But because I've done the, I've done the maybe seven years prior, when I moved, especially when I moved back home for a while, when I moved back to Nigeria for a while, I did a lot of driving. As in, I think I had my driving feel. So I'm yeah. full of driving. I'm done driving. I'm not interested in driving. Um, but it's kind of hard for some people that are close to you say, so don't you, so their idea of success would be, okay, so now you need to get a car. And I'm thinking, I would rather take that money and use that money for a car, for something else that I can mix, I can, I, I can have a monetary benefit, but that will give me a sense of fulfillment that is yeah. beyond that. <clears throat> but the concept of if you don't have a car, you're not successful, yeah. or you don't appear successful, how could you be going in on, tra- on you know, using public transport or a Uber? Yeah. So your your values are going to be very, very important here. I think values will determine success. And then that will determine the kinds of things you want to do. And being aware that there's going to be, 
I mean, it's like a transformation that you're going through. So it's being aware that you're going to get a lot of adversity because, A, you're changing from I don't want a car anymore. And everybody you've had a relationship with has known you as, we'll use your example as wanting a car. Or me, it was yes. um, having a really good income and a steady job. And they're like, what is, which, I mean, you can have a really good income yes. <laughs> with entrepreneurship. So, Absolutely. but it's like they don't know anybody that's doing that so there's just a lot of adversity towards your change that they're not ready for because because you're doing something different from what everybody else is doing in your in that immediate community and 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 there's a lot of a lot of love and care comes from it as well because there's a worry that you're stepping out of something we're not familiar and it is scary to be honest with you when i think it's very terrifying (laughs) it's really terrifying when i think about um okay, starting off a new business or developing a new business. And then it requires you doing things like training, you know, learning new stuff, getting a mentor or a coach. And that's been really good. Regularly. (laughs) I want to throw that out there because I'm a perfectionist and I will do anything to not fail. And I have never failed so many times in my life. And I think it's actually really, it's the weird thing of, this it's humbling. helped me fail. Like it's helped me learn that failure is good. <laughs> it's humbling. I, I, and I think that, 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 that helps you really ask yourself questions to why you do what you do. So why are you in, why are you in the corporate world? Some people it's fun and we're not knocking it. We're saying yeah. it's great. Thrive in the space that you want to thrive in. But yes. I think what we're trying to say is, If you're not thriving there, start asking questions. Start asking yourself, why am I not thriving here? What is the other thing that I like to do? Yeah. Um, What do I want my life to be about? You know, what what is that? What do I I want my life to look like? And what is that thing that I like to do and I enjoy to do? And how can I actually monetize that without it being... um, and I think it's that monetizing question that, you know, like that stopped me for a long time. And I actually get a lot of questions on that too. And it's, there are a lot more ways out there that, you know, if you don't want to do affiliate marketing, you can write, or if you don't want to do that, it's like doing YouTube videos and getting so many views and then you can monetize your YouTube and there, you can even like get free sounds and do like sleep tracks and you can monetize <laughs> that. Like, you don't have to do anything like, you know, <laughs> But can I tell you one ridiculous thing? I'm sorry for anybody else that's going to be on here that is going to hear this and probably enjoys it or they do it. I find it a little bit ridiculous. Is that eating video? People just film themselves eating. Eating yes. food. Oh, so we were in Italy but right before COVID, um, December 2019. <laughs> we were there for my birthday. We went to this really fantastic dinner. And I'm sorry if anybody's vegan or vegetarian, but it was like an all meat dinner because we were in Tuscany and they have this like one of their main dishes is like um, bistecca and it's like this huge steak. It was so good, but it was like seven courses of beef. Very delicious. If you like meat, I'm sorry if you don't. (laughs) But um, There was and we were there in the off season. So it was a bunch of Italians and then us and a couple from Thailand and then in the middle which the couple from Thailand was fantastic, but the couple, there was a person in the middle and they had their phone and camera and they were filming themselves eating this meal. So it is real. And a lot of people are making money from it. So I'm like, yeah, because you can't, not everybody can go to the steak dinner in Tuscany, you know, like it's, so it's being able to enjoy that experience virtually. Amazing. So basically what we're trying to say is there's stuff out there for you. Yeah, you can be a coach for whatever you think about. Um, I have seen time coaches. I have seen, um, I mean, like mentoring coaches, but then I've also seen um, efficiency coaches. Like if you just need to be more efficient in your life. And I was like, what? There literally is a coach for anything. (laughs) There is. But another thing we need to put out there is authenticity. People being authentic and not just copying other people. And copying how other people do things. And I mean, you spoke about the real, and I'm like, I, I don't know how to do those silly videos. And, it's and not, if you don't want to, don't do it. And I, and I don't want to know how to do the silly videos. I yeah. enjoy watching them, but do I want to do the silly videos? No. Um, and that energy is going to come across if you're trying to do them and you don't like doing them. It's going to be like, 
Ugh, why? Like, I mean, people are gonna get that vibe. So don't don't just drop out. Don't just go on a on a bandwagon of whatever is happening. Yeah. Um, even with di- even with digital marketing or businesses that come up as an entrepreneur, it's not every business I think you should get involved in if it's not yeah. your kind of business. Yeah, if it um, doesn't fit, like don't do it because if it doesn't fit, it's never like you're trying to make something work that's not going to work. Absolutely, absolutely. I want to ask you now. There's something on your website I saw about. Deter- basically about being an entrepreneur, which was, I think, determined, being determined, coachability, resilience, and self-belief. And I think mm-hmm. we've touched on a couple of them today. So yeah. I would say these are your four main um, targets, or what would that? What, how would you? What would you call them? Um, like your four main needs for being being able to do this. I mean, to be sorry, there was a bee that flew at me. <laughs> Um, I think your four main things that you need to be able to be an entrepreneur because, I mean, I know you're familiar with it. I was not. Being an engineer, you know, you can show up. Like, you know you're going to, once you get the job, you know you're going to show up and you're going to get paid every two weeks, every month, whatever your paycheck is. And, like, you can show up and have a day where you're like, I don't like no if i'm going to you know like you can just show up and yeah. not care and still do your job whereas when you're an entrepreneur like you have to believe in yourself i can't tell you how many days i have felt like i'm not any good at this like i'm terrible i'm going to fail i'm not meant to do this and then it's like a lot of self work of no i can do this, can do this. It's building confidence and it's i mean there have definitely been like it's getting over those days and pushing through um, showing up when you're like, I'm sucking at this. <laughs> what a lot of people think as well. I think being an entrepreneur and and starting up when we talk, we're talking about digital marketing here specifically. Yeah, you really have. To, it's a lot of work, and you really have to be determined and ready and 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 resilient. Yeah. And what are your tools? What would you say are your main tools? Um. Well, so emotional or tools. What should I say? Your startup tools. Because people would think, oh, I yeah. need to have, okay. I need to have a whole editing suite. I need to have, yeah. you know, staff. I need to have people yeah. that are pushing my brand, and I need to be doing yeah. advertising. So I started with absolutely zero, and I think the main things that helped were having definitely that mentor, that coach, whatever you have, um, and like that can the mentor, the coach, and the training, you know. I think all of those go hand in hand, um, but having that because nobody knows what we're doing. And even that training, the training is very helpful, but even the training is like, you know, it's your business. So take it and do with it what you will. Like you can follow it to a T or you can evolve it to yourself. Um, so I think the coach and the training and you don't, you don't even have to have a Facebook account. You don't even have to have an Instagram account to start. You can start from zero. Um, and I think those are like the three main things that you need to really get started. And a phone, <laughs> you know, and a phone. Like, if and you're a phone. on social media, and a phone. So if, if somebody wants to start an affiliate today and we want to speak to you, how yes. can you be, what, what service, I want you to use this opportunity and tell us what your service is and, and you know, let people know if they're interested in, you know, in, in having a conversation with you, about yeah. checking about chopping their corporate jobs and do you do any training do you do any advice do you do any one-on-one coaching um yes for sure i am happy to take calls um i'm currently not charging for one-on-one but i've like thought about it <laughs> i know um yeah if you want to get affiliated and started um so there is training that my community does, but I am also there. To, like I would be your mentor to help with. No, I think you should skip that part of the training. This is not for you. And I think you should do this part of the training and really help dive into you. Cause that's um, like, there was so much out there that there's a good amount of the training that I decided not to do when I started, I started out doing all organic. Um, so I skipped all the paid advertising stuff and now I'm doing paid ads, but you know, it's like finding what that vibes for you. Um, and really just like, I am always available too for 
any topic on mental health. Um, I have quite a few DMs that I ongoing of just discussing about, you know, I must like say, struggles I must, with leveling I must, up. Go ahead. I must say, one thing I did, I, I did enjoy talking to you, even interacting with you has been that there is a lot of, you're, you're, you're very given with information. Yeah. You're very, um, mm -hmm. you're not, um, you're not withholding. And I think no, because when you're in this kind, I think when you're in this kind of digital or entrepreneurial kind of community, I think there's a different kind of exchange of, mm -hmm. of, um, in, of a batter and the way we grow. And I yeah. think that's something people to, could understand that when you come into that, yeah. If you're really, I, I know some people don't, and I, I really yeah. don't know if that's their personal thing, but I have yeah. had very good experience um, with a lot of sharing and giving of information. Yeah. And, and I think that is very um, important because we're yeah. not in competition with one another. No. We're just, no. We're you're, gonna, <laughs> you're going to attract different clients that I'm going to attract. Yeah. So if I can help you, I'd, and I've learned this too with the people, um, I've met several other people on social media too, that we just exchange information. And yeah. I mean, and if you want to work with me, so for everybody out there listening, yeah, if you want to get affiliated, I would love to have you, but also like, it's important to find out if it's a fit for you, because if it's not a fit, then I don't want you to go into it. You know, like if it's not going to work for you, I don't want you to go into it. I want it to work for you. Um, so that's like, yeah, if you're going to leave, corporate you know i want it to be the right fit for the right person and, and maybe it's not being an affiliate maybe it's i'm introducing you to like oh you can write on medium you know <laughs> or i have several <laughs> blog sites that i'm i'm still wanting to grow my blog so i have a lot of training that i have not done yet on my blog but i'm like happy to share where i've pulled that training from and you know it's and i think that's, that's, a that's, better life. <laughs> that's a beautiful thing it's not, it's not speaking from a point of, oh, I have arrived. Some, sometimes you're speaking from a point of, can we ride together? Yeah. And we're figuring it out together. And one major thing I think we need to put out there is a lot of people thinking being an entrepreneur is getting involved in, um, get rich, get rich quick schemes yeah, or no. go the other way. way. <laughs> go the other way. You know, or any of these things are going to be like, Oh, you, you're speaking to a, a coach and she goes, oh, she's making 40 something K every six months. And you're yeah. thinking, hmm, it requires work. Yeah. If you're ready and I think the work, biggest thing that's important to remember, and everybody knows, maybe not everybody knows that you subconsciously know. So there's a saying out there that like a small business doesn't make a profit until year three, I believe. Yeah, that's um, And it's the same with entrepreneurship. I mean, I think you can make a profit before then, but it's just a, I think the biggest graph, the best thing I represented, <laughs> representative that I saw was, you know, it's going to be slow. And then all of a sudden you're going to shoot up and that's like you're building. And there's a lot of stuff. I mean, I have started to see it. So I've been doing this full time since December. So not incredibly long. Um, I started part time back in June about a year ago and there's a lot of growing that happened and it was really slow and there's a lot of stuff that you don't see happening. Um, so when you're putting in the work and you're not seeing the results right away, like they're happening, you just don't see it yet. The results, sometimes you see it when you look back at the stuff that you, you were producing before or how you were, or how you're developing your ideas. It's like my conversation yeah. about me venturing into was this digital marketing avenue yeah. that I thought, I didn't realize when I stepped into it. I honestly yeah. did not realize it was not the plan. But yeah. stepping into it and then seeing how it can be married together with all the other things yeah. that I want to do. It can really allow you to focus on the main thing you want to focus on. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it has been awesome, 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 awesome having you. But I want you to give us one last takeaway. Uh, what, would be, what would be your one last takeaway of being a, being an entrepreneur and a digital marketer? I think the, I don't know, my biggest takeaway for anything in life is it's too short. We only have one. So if you are not happy, really try to figure out why you're not happy or what would make you happy. And it's terrifying, but if you didn't take that chance, would you regret it 20 years from now wishing that you had? And 
And then when you get into entrepreneurship, remember that. <laughs> With all the terrifying moments, remember that I am doing this so that I, I can have the life I want. And, for, and, and another one would be, I think you said it before, but I, I would just like you to say clearly right now, what is your idea of success? What is Lydia's idea of success? Uh, my idea of success is having good mental health and having um, the time and the flexibility to travel when I want and to see friends and family when I want and kind of to be able to build the life I have that's of meaning so I can provide true purpose and meaning to people as in like talking about women's health or women's rights, um, sustainability, and that is success to me. Um, being able to do those things and really talk about the messages I want to share because I think success before is money and in the corporate world, but I wasn't able to talk about women's rights and I wasn't able to talk about sustainability. And those were really, really important to my core. So it's, I guess, being really true to myself and being authentic is my idea of success. I think that is fantastic. Thank you so much. But before we rush yeah. on, I totally forgot one thing I wanted to highlight. Ah. <laughs> which is something that is dear to you as well. Normalizing therapy. I like the fact that normalizing having to speak to somebody and have somebody yeah. to share and say, this is how I'm feeling. Yep. This is, and, and owning the way you're feeling and yeah. just having someone to speak to and say, honestly, not judging how you're feeling, but making sure yeah. you're able to have somebody that you can speak to and say, this is how I'm feeling. And you're yeah. allowed to feel that way. And you're allowed to have a look at why you're feeling that way. Yeah. And, and go on and not necessarily yeah. um, tell you you are going to be um, what, what fix you but allow yeah. you I think my it. therapist the best way I like to describe my therapist is so I've been seeing a therapist now for I don't know four to five years and I see her when I am depressed I see her when I am in a good state of mind um, I like to say she helps me sort my thoughts <laughs> so that I can understand them and deal with them. And it can be anything from like changing my job or it can be a good problem, you know, that you're just like, I feel like it's jumbled <laughs> and I don't know which direction to go. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. I really did appreciate this. And I hope yeah. everybody that was on with us today yeah. actually oh, got so some to join. <laughs> How is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you to watch the replay. You're going to have it on IGTV. It's going to come right? on okay. real soon. Real, okay. It's not going to be a while. So I do hope everybody, you know, get something from this and ask questions. And I'm definitely going to put your link on there and okay. let everybody know that they can bug you at any time yep. on, on DM and have, and, you know, and talk yep. to you. And I must say to people, they, I mean, Lydia, you're actually good people and it's really <laughs> good to have connected with you. Yes, and, I really um, enjoy talking with you and becoming friends with you. I mean, <laughs> absolutely. And I think, and I think that's the best way you can influence or, or you can interact with anybody is, for, I think friendship, it's, it's, it's a good thing. I think it's really not a bad thing. It's, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and that gives you the liberty to be able to influence one another and learn from one another. And mm -hmm. I think there's so much joy in that. And that for me is, one of my ideals of what success is to be able to have a community of people yeah. that you are free to be you yourself yeah. and everybody's cool with it. So yes. it's been a blast. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. I don't want to keep you, I don't want to keep you for more than an hour. Yeah. But I appreciate Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for waking up so early. Hi guys, you're yeah. gonna all have to go watch the replay in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God bless. Take care. Thank now. you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>